They say the fastest way around any majorly congested city is on foot, at least for short distances. But is it the easiest way around? That's what we're here to find out. We're going to take a walk around Mandaluyong and Ortigas and, well, barely five meters in, we've already got obstructions. That there, as you can see, people have to walk around it. They eventually have to walk on the road. That's not safe. These are just some of the things that get in the way of a pedestrian-friendly city. Let's see what else is out there. Now this is not really the proper width that you want for a pedestrian lane, but that's not really the issue. The issue is when you clog them up even more with signs like this. It's bad enough we have an electrical pole, then you put a sign next to it. I mean, where are people supposed to walk, right? As you can probably see right now, people are forced to walk around and on the road, and that's just not safe. We're walking across this pedestrian crossing. There's no enforcer, but that's not really the big deal. The big deal is this right here. It's a very clear no parking zone. They've taken up the footpath. So where else are people supposed to walk? Back on the street. Aside from accidents, anything that you do to disrupt the flow of traffic will have a ripple effect down the line. So if I just walk a little bit here, the car has to move alongside of me, which will then encroach into the other lane. Everybody slows down. When you go back over there, about half a kilometer back, it's at a perfect standstill. That's the real effect of traffic. It's almost like a maze. It's a good thing I didn't have the extra rice because I don't think I would have fit in there. So you do have these areas where it bottlenecks and it just gets a little bit too tight. And the whole idea here is if it's not conducive for pedestrians to use, they won't use it. So these are some of the things that really need to be sorted out. But it's not a whole 100% bad. When they do something good, we also point it out. Barriers are a must if you want to separate the cars from pedestrians. It's the only way to do it. So at least they have this. Okay, so far we've talked about the motorists and also what the government needs to do. But the pedestrians also have a big role to play. You see these big signs up here? That's there for a reason. Do not cross the street in this area. There are pedestrian crossings barely 100 meters or 150 meters up the road, but people still choose to go here. And that is part of the problem. Now, I don't want to seem like I'm nitpicking or anything here, but these are the types of things that discourage the use of pedestrian ways. This is one thing, it's kind of open, but imagine if it's a bit bigger like this. I mean, you could be walking in one big thing and that could end up in hospital. It's green. Yep, it's green. <laughs> And you can see how many of them try to muscle their way through. This intersection in particular is a pet hate of mine. You can actually turn the camera now. You'll still see it's green and you'll still see people are now muscling their way through. So this is what happens every time here in this particular intersections and intersections all around Metro Manila. There's no respect for the pedestrian crossings, which in turn leads to people not feeling safe, which leads to people not wanting to walk. And then you have these pedestrian overpasses, which is a really good idea. You need this everywhere, especially on big roads like EDSA. Problem is, it's a little steep. We're not going to complain about that, but they really should have handrails on both sides, especially for elderly people. Speaking of people like elderly people and people with disabilities, there's really not much hope for any of them to make it up these steps here. So wheelchair access would be a plus maybe an elevator, but we still got a long way to go, as you can see. Now, some of you out there might think that some of the things that I pointed out might be a little harsh or a little bit too trivial. There are bigger things to worry about, in other words. But just to be clear, we're not trying to hate on anyone here, or okay, maybe just one or two, like the people who muscle their way through a green light of a pedestrian crossing just to put their cars there. But aside from that, we're just simply trying to point out the hurdles that are in the way of pedestrians actually using the pedestrian crossings and the pedestrian walkways. You see, urban design is all about influencing behavior. If you're trying to encourage people to use a certain mode of transport or do a certain thing, you make it conducive for them. 
what we've seen so far is far from conducive. So until those things are addressed, you can expect people to take the other way out, which is what we don't want, like the tricycles and other motorized transport. So to keep it safe and healthy for everyone, let's keep the walkways nice and clear.